wasn't emphasized in Babylonian religion or Egyptian religion. The fear of the Lord is really emphasized in Christian religion because we know that we deal with the sovereign of this universe. We deal with the God who created this world. And so we need to have the fear of the Lord. And in the book of Proverbs, we'll read that the fear of the Lord leads to knowledge of God. It it leads to hatred of evil and pride and arrogance. It leads to long life. He will say it leads to avoidance of death. And it will lead to wisdom and humility and honor and wealth. The fear of the Lord leads to all of these things. And it's just absolutely amazing that everything depends on the fear of the Lord. Now, sometimes we look at the fear of the Lord and go, oh, God can blast us. And that's true. Don't worry about, you know, falling into the hands of men who could only kill your body. Worry about falling into the hands of a living God who can destroy your soul. That's true. Okay. You should be afraid. Very afraid. But that's not what really what he's talking about here. What he's talking about is respect. He's talking about knowing how to be a student. Okay? The student walks into class and goes, hey, I'm smarter than you. <laughs> you have nothing to teach me. Well, you won't be taught anything. But the student needs to be put into a posture of, yes, I can learn from the teacher. And that's what the fear of the Lord is all about. It's this attitude of respect saying, I have lots to learn. It is an attitude of humility. I have lots to learn from God. Fools aren't those who can't learn, but those who won't. And that's what a fool is. But let's apply this, what we've learned today. There are tons of self-help books in this world, and you can read self-help books on just about anything. Um, you know, and, and they're everywhere, and they're selling tons in Christian stores and non-Christian stores. They're just, they're just everywhere. And everybody's making money on self-help books. This book teaches us that wisdom can be learned. It teaches us that it will form our character and that this wisdom is anchored in the fear of the Lord. That's this wisdom, this, that's this self-help book's theme. Education is never just there to give you knowledge. It is there in the Bible to teach you character, to teach you how to do something and to teach you how to be honest and, and fair and just in all of those situations. It is there to prove who you are. Wisdom teaches us that human abilities need to be captured and corrected. When God says that we need to be disciplined, that means that we are start off on the wrong path. Or we are going on the wrong path and we need to be corrected. Those skills that you have already, that you've learned in life, need to be brought under God's subjection, need to be brought into God's school, and we need to let Him teach us in all of these situations. This goes against much of our culture's addiction to feeling good. You know, most of the self-help books are just designed to help you feel better about yourself, designed to think better about yourself. You know... This one says, you're broken, and you, God can fix you. You can become a wise person. We hear very little about rebellion and brokenness and repentance in any self-help book. But this self-help book starts with that and ends with that. And saying, yes, I am a sinner. I, have, I fail all the time. Yeah, I have skills. I have intelligence. I have experience but I need to bring all of those under God's direction. The fear of the Lord is precisely about turning from rebellion to teachability. We need to walk into class and say, what can you teach me, Lord? That's what the fear of the Lord is all about. Good feelings come from embracing all of reality, and that reality includes the fact that God knows more than you do. He created you, he he designed you, he knows how you function, and he will help you Uh, become the person that you want to be. Wisdom is above all this attitude towards God that influences all of our uh, decisions, all of our actions. And wisdom needs to be applied in every one of those areas. This attitude doesn't take away from our responsibility. You are still free to choose to do something good or to do something amazingly stupid. You know, you have that freedom. But God says, no, bring your skills, bring your attitude to me. And let me teach. Let me influence your behavior. We have a tendency to shy away from the fear of the Lord. We do. We want, we want to hear phrases like, God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. 
But wisdom also teaches us that there needs to be correction and there needs to be repentance. Our enjoyment of God's love is going to be much greater if we know what God loves and what He doesn't love and who He is and who He's not. And we need to be know, know that. So what would the Lord have us know about Himself? God is the one who saves. He gives us life. He gives us the power to be what He wants us to be. He does all of those things. And we need to know that so we can love Him the way He wants us. He has liberated us from the power of sin and He wants us to become like His Son. That's what wisdom is all about. Becoming like His Son. Becoming a student of His Son. It begins with this attitude of teachability. That's really what the fear of the Lord is. Are you teachable? Are you willing to listen to Him? And to learn who the Son is and to become like Him. And as we grow in wisdom, um, because we're teachable, we'll also grow in our understanding of who God is and we'll become like His Son, Jesus Christ. Righteousness and justice and straight dealing are the foundation of all the things that we do with our neighbors. He talked about those three things. They're the pillars. They're the foundations of everything. And he's going to tell us, for example, that if you want to love your neighbor, we have to do so in our speech. And so he is going to say, a man who lacks judgment uh, puts down his neighbor, but a man who, of understanding holds his tongue. How do you love your neighbor? Don't put down your neighbor. Okay, Hold your tongue. Concern for fair dealing is found in 22.9. A generous man will, get, will himself be blessed, for he shares his bread with the poor. He's going to tell us how to be fair with other people and just in this world. The wise man practices what he's learned, just like this little girl is practicing what she's learned. You know, she's putting it into practice. Wise men need to do this as well. Put God's word into practice in our life. I want to conclude with this young man here. He doesn't look so young anymore. His name is William French Anderson. He has won a Nobel Prize, a Nobel Prize in science. He's one of the smartest guys on the planet. He has an IQ of 176. I don't know if you understand IQs, but most of us are between 70 and 130. That's like 95% of us. People below 70, we consider challenged. People above that, genius. You know, if, you're, you, know, if you have an IQ of 100, this guy is as much smarter than you are as someone who can't tie their shoes, okay? That's how smart this guy is. Back in 2006, Mr. Anderson was arrested for molesting a child. His lawyer says at his arraignment, nothing about having 176 IQ means you have good judgment, okay? This man screwed it up. He sinned horribly, horrible judgment. Smarter than anybody on the planet, almost. But he made a horrible decision because he did not have good judgment. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how long you've walked with Christ. We all need to make good decisions. And those decisions are made when we are teachable and let God instruct us. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for teaching us we thank you for the love that you share to us. And Lord, we pray that all the days of our life, in every decision that we make, we will be teachable. Lord, we know that we, we sometimes fail. And Lord, we know then you are very forgiving. But Lord, we pray that you would put us back on the path of wisdom so that we will be wise in the coming weeks and months of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray.